his dog out. Take the flying spark out. On my track in jaws. Who's there? Who is it? Uh, stopping for a visit? Is that you, Santa Claus? Welcome to a ham radio special here at D-Lab. And today, we're going to solve the hum issues on a realistic DX150 series receiver. This is by far the greatest receiver that Radio Shack ever made. I used to drool over these when I was a kid. Now I've got one. It's a mint example of the radio. However, they had some inherent problems that I want to share with you and show you how to fix it and make this a much more stable and clean, bold sounding shortwave receiver. So here she is, a Super Elemento Realistic DX150B shortwave receiver. Built back in the mid 70s, I believe. These are a very nice receiver with a beautiful aluminum panel and an external speaker. Now you can see the speaker I have is not the realistic one, it's actually made by Allied, but it's actually the same as the SP150 offered by Radio Shack for this receiver. So now let's go to what the problems are of the receiver and how to resolve them. One of the main complaints I've heard over the years of the 150 and 160 series receivers is the fact that they lack frequency stability and audio response. And this is due to an underrated power supply section in the radio. They have a very small power transformer and inadequate filtering for the DC power. So if you take a listen to this, I have the RF gain all the way back, and we're going to turn the AF gain all the way up. And tell me what you hear. All right, I'll zoom in on the speaker. You hear it? 60 cycle hum coming out of this radio. All right, so let's investigate that and find out why we have this hum on this vintage receiver. The first thing you would think is, well, probably the filter caps dried up. So let's take a look. So before I open this radio up, I want to give you guys a little tech tip. There's a strange thing about these DX150 and 160s receivers that you really need to know about, right? So here's the radio, it's powered up, right? Lights are on, all that good stuff. Now I'm gonna reach around and take out the fuse. So I'm taking the fuse out. There it is. Look, the radio's still powered up. And that's because the fuse did not fuse the dial lamps. It only fused the DC supply that powered the actual radio circuits. So at this point, I can take my RF gain up, AF gain up, and she's dead, right? I've seen a lot of these radios out there for sale. And people say, well, it lights up, but I don't get any sound, so I'm selling it as is for like 20 bucks. Guess what? It's probably the fuse, right? Let's put the fuse back in. There we go. Fuse is in, AF gain. You got sound. Very strange setup, but that's how Realistic did it back in the day so that you could also power this thing on 12 volts DC. So keep that in mind. You may get a really good deal on one of these receivers. So we'll pop the top of this DX150B receiver. Now this is my personally owned receiver. This thing is in excellent condition. I really love the radio, but I want to resolve this issue with power supply hum and a little bit of frequency drift. Here's that little puny power transformer I was telling you about. Here's your RF section with the variable tuning cap. There's the rest of the radio. So next, let's dive into the power supply and see what we can do about cleaning that up and making this thing the top performing receiver that it should have been. So first off, here's the power supply filter caps. These are the old original 470 microfarad caps that came in this radio the day it was built. So obviously the first thing we need to do is change them out. Maybe that'll take care of the hum. I don't know. 
But what I'd like to do first is we're going to throw a scope on the power supply and take a look at the hum level. Then we'll change the caps and see if we change it. So to baseline our noise level, I'm just going to go to that fuse holder, which is in line with the DC voltage going to the first filter cap. Here's my scope. We've got about 300 millivolts of noise. And that's what you can hear in the speaker. So, first step, let's change the filter caps. There's actually three of these 470 microfarad caps in here, rated at 16 volts. And I have three new 470 microfarad caps rated at 25 volts. So we'll swap those out and put the scope back on the power supply and see if that decreases the hum amplitude. So there's the old caps. New caps are in. The scope is hooked back up. Guess what? No change. Still have the hum. Still have the buzz coming out of the speakers. So what's the next step? How about we put a choke in that power supply. The choke I selected to add to the filter section of the DX150 is this one made by Triad. It's 0.32 Henry's at 600 milliamps DC. Yes, this is a pretty good sized choke, but I needed that current capability and what's nice it is it only injects about 10 ohms of resistance into the power supply string of the DX150. So there will be 12 volts passing through this choke and then that's regulated down to 9 volts internally to power the radio. So this should not influence the operation of the power supply at all except for hopefully cleaning it up, right? Now here's the other nice thing. Look at this big footprint here I have on the chassis. So he's going to mount right here, right? It's not going to interfere with anything. The other thing that's cool is we know that this fuse only breaks the DC power supply that feeds the receiver section of the radio. So I'm going to take these two wires and I'm going to swing it right up to those two terminals of the fuse holder, remove the fuse, that puts the choke in line. So we'll do that, we'll take a look at the scope and see what that does to our hum level. So the choke is installed. I've got a wired across that fuse holder, like I said, but the fuse is still in. So we really haven't changed anything yet. Let's take a look at the scope. We still got about 300 millivolts of noise, and you can hear it in the speaker. Now, let's take out the fuse. All right, the buzz changed. Let's look at the scope. You can see the pattern change and we're down to about 100 millivolts. We still have a little bit of noise. So the choke is trying to do its job. The reason it can't effectively do its job is because we don't have a true Pi filter. What we need to do is add one more cap where the choke initially goes off the rectifier. And let's see what that does to the hum. So what we're going to do is add one more 470 microfarad cap to the input side of the choke that's coming right off the rectifier. Right, so let's take a look at our hum again. Now, we'll put the new cap in. Guess what? Look at that. No hum. Full volume. Take the cap off. Got some of the hum back, right? Put the fuse back in, bypass the choke. Look at that. So look what we've done by adding a choke one more cap. So there it is. I'm going to install the choke, add the cap, and we'll test out the 150 on the air. But I think I got it. Everything's mounted up. Choke's bolted in place. New filter cap. We're monitoring with a scope on the output of that fuse holder, which is the output side of the choke. Here on the speaker, there's nothing. Remember, we had 300 millivolts of ripple. I don't see anything. Let's take our level way down here. about five millivolts, if that, of hum. I bet you this thing's gonna sound like a million bucks now when we fire it up. So let's go put her on an antenna, see how the old DX150 is performing. Here's the power supply circuit out of the service manual 
for the DX150B. Now if you look at the schematic for a plain 150, a 150A, and the 160, you'll see that this 12 volt power supply scheme is pretty much the same. So you can do this upgrade on all of those models. So I'll scroll down now and I'll show you what the modified circuit looks like. You can see all this remained the same. Simply added the choke and another 470 microfarad cap to give you that super nice clean power supply circuit. And as I stated before, total cost is under $20. Well here's the initial test of the DX150B receiver with the new power supply modification. So at this point I have the RF gain all the way back, AF gain all the way up, we have an 8 inch speaker, and you can see she's completely dead quiet. Now let's bring up the RF gain. Uh, and there they do not like and AF. And I think uh, again, and listen uh, to that audio. Uh, is also a response to, uh, in a way, the uh, uh, the measure, the extent to which uh, we're able to disturb the activities of the group. Suspected militants from the Allied Democratic Forces said to be behind the assault, which took place at the UN mission in the town of Similiki. Turning over to sports. Formula One world champion Lewis Alright, let's tune around a little more on short wave. But man, listen to that audio. Time. Alright, coming into next year's season, he admits that. ton of RF gain. Alright, let's go down here at 40 meter. See if we can find some guys on sideband. Been laying flat, bouncing up and down the I-10 and I-50 and I-Y and I-7 and a bunch of country roads. If they were going to sag, they would have sagged a long time ago. Eh, se va a poner eh, de manifiesto ahora a partir del año 2018 eh, una, una nueva modalidad. Y esto nos explota. Primero, las competencias van a durar dos días. O sea, usted compite hoy clasifica si avanza We always got to check the time That's on 5 megahertz So as you can see, this thing's really performing. It's got great audio. Of course, I did not compare the audio before I did the mod, but as you can imagine, if you have a cleaner power supply, you're gonna have better stability, and you're gonna have cleaner audio. The other thing is, is this entire modification was under $20. That choke is about 12 bucks. The caps, as you know, are less than a buck a piece. So it's well worth doing to your DX150 if you love it like I do and you want to keep it, this one is my baby. Hope you enjoyed the video.